Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes and X-Plane 11. For this flight we are going from Singapore to Jakarta in an Airbus A380. This is a freeware A380. Uh, you can sort of tell by the cockpit. Cockpits are hard. Uh, but on the exterior we have a Singapore Airlines livery as appropriate. It is smoking quite a lot but we will assume that that is nominal. And we are starting with the Apollo 13 audio. So this is a extra special flight because we are just getting started with that. And I also got a new graphics card thanks to a Twitch viewer who gave me his old graphics card. That Satellite 999 gave me his old RTX 2070. It's amazing that that's his old graphics card. But um, my previous graphics card was a GTX 970. So it is a step up and we will see the relative performance. Uh, this isn't a very taxing plane overall, uh, not compared to say a Concorde or something like that, but we'll see. Anyway, so hopefully we'll get some good visuals out of this. Here goes the audio. And again, I've cut out the long silences in the audio, but otherwise retained as much of the original audio as was actually audible. Let's adjust the volume a bit. That seems this is loud. Apollo Saturn launch control, T minus five minutes, 27 seconds and counting. Now, as we move into the final phase of the countdown, we're receiving go no go checks from various. I think of that's the about team. right. Okay, the here we go. Test conductor Skip Chauvin gave the test supervisor a spacecraft ready. At that time, on our large status board here in the firing room, the green light came on behind the spacecraft. Green light now is also on behind the emergency detection system. Now standing by for more checks, the uh, mission director, Chet Lee, from the Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston, says we are go for launch, and the range indicates the range is ready to support. Chill down of the S-4B stage. Now if I could the take off stage, right at the moment that they lift time, off, that would be great, but I, that's not happening. <laughs> that's not happening. Seconds. Swing uh, arm number nine now is retracting to the full retract Well, we'll position. rotate swing at swing nine, arm retract, retract at least. Position. And the director of launch operations, Walt Caprian, okay. has given Apollo 13 a go for launch. We're now approaching the four-minute mark. At the T-minus four-minute mark, we'll be standing by for Jack Baltar, the launch vehicle test conductor, to say that his launch vehicle team is ready to carry out the final phase here of the countdown. At the T-minus... Three minutes, uh, second mark. Pretty cloudy we day, we can't see a whole lot. Oh, there's Singapore, as it is. Maybe we should swing around it just to see the performance as we climb. Automatic. The sequencer can check out I mean, it is a Singapore Airlines plane after all. Vehicle. At the same time, the team here in the launch control center will be uh, monitoring I'm worried about the clouds values. blocking the way there. These are such things as temperatures and pressures, which we do not want to either go above or below. A final communications check now. The astronauts on the Astrocom circuit and launch operations manager, Paul Donnelly, during his final check, said, good luck, head for the hills. He was referring to the Frau Mauro, hilly Frau Mauro region of the moon. As we come up on the T-minus three-minute mark at three minutes, the capsule communicator, Paul Whites, will begin reading out the minus time to the crew. <clears throat> nah, too cloudy. Board now we can see that the uh, spacecraft or the uh, first stage preparations are now complete. The firing command has now been initiated. This is the I'm also using GPU encoding for the recording the launch, launch for the first time, so we'll see how that goes. In our final three minutes of the countdown. Apparently, uh, this video card is better at that. Apollo 13 continues to be go. The astronauts still reporting back from the spacecraft Odyssey. Spacecraft Commander Jim Lovell says Odyssey is go. He will be the last one to uh, perform a uh, function here during the countdown at the T-minus 45 second mark. The Commander Jim Lovell will set the final alignment of the spacecraft guidance. That's the last crew action before the... Uh, I sort of wish I had this video card when I was doing the SR-71 flight, of course. 2.13 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now T-minus 2 minutes, 18 seconds and counting and our count continues to look good. Our weather is no constraint to launch today. Earlier fears about the weather uh, seem to have dissipated. A stationary front over the Florida-Georgia border has not sent down the predicted bad weather that we had feared. 
We just passed the two minute mark, just passed the two minute mark in the countdown and the pressurization now of the vehicle tanks is beginning. The third stage liquid oxygen tank has now been pressurized and the second stage liquid oxygen tank has been pressurized. We'll be making our final transfer from external power source, that is from the external power source at the pad to the launch vehicle batteries at the T-minus 50 second mark. We'll be keeping an eye on that power transfer at T-minus 50 seconds. So we're going across the Singapore Strait. And we'll pretty soon be over Indonesia. These islands in front of us are part of Indonesia. Oh, well, that's a good view of Singapore right there. You can see the numerous airfields. That's a very nice view. T minus 50 seconds as we pass the T minus 50 second mark, the power transfer takes place. First stage, second stage. You can see the downtown stage, area in the lower left. Going to internal power. T minus 37 seconds and our count continues to go well. We'll be looking for an ignition of those five first stage engines at the T minus 8.9 second mark. We pass T minus 30, T minus 25 seconds and counting and Apollo 13 is go. T minus 20 seconds, T minus 20 seconds and counting. 17, guidance release, 15, Okay, 14, just needed to check 13, that there wasn't 12, some pressurization 11, system in 10, here. Would be 9, tough. Eight, ignition sequence has started. Six, five, four, three, and two, one, zero. They're off. We have commit and we have liftoff at 213. The Saturn V building up to 7.6 million pounds of thrust, and it has cleared the tower. So that's uh, Jim Lovell, Jack Swagger, and Fred Hayes this on this point. mission. And of course, Apollo 13 was the one that didn't actually make the landing because they had a problem with the service module. It exploded. Um, so, yeah, we will have an interesting time listening to that. Obviously, the mission is going to be shorter than Apollo 12, which, since we only have 35 flights left, should be fine. They're also not as chatty as the Apollo 12 bunch. So, yeah, there's Indonesia here. We're going to head straight over uh, to Sumatra. And then south to Java. And at one minute ten seconds, we show an altitude of four point one nautical miles. Downrange one mile. All sources continue to report where go. The trajectory on our plot boards is right on the pre-planned -pre line. And the booster engineer reports we're now through the region of maximum dynamic pressure, and we're go. I think I'm gonna go with 34,000 feet. We're sort of technically going westward. 13 Houston, standby for mode 1 Charlie. Mark, you're 1 Charlie. Mark, 1 Charlie. And 13, you're go for staging. Well, wow, it's got a lot of lift. Altitude now 17 miles coming up on staging. Inboard. Jim Lovell reports the inboard engine has shut down as scheduled. Oh, and we're going too fast. We confirm inboard out. I don't have very much throttle on right now. I was at only a little bit above 50% just now. miles altitude. Oh, well, I say 30%, but that's just the throttle setting, not the actual RPM. Test to ignition. Roger.
You can Third sort of see Sumatra ahead of us. Good. Thrust is good. Uh, Roger. Capcom Joe Kerwin confirming to the crew that the second stage looks good at this point. We're now 46 miles high, 70 miles, 78 miles downrange. Yeah, it's a bit fidgety. Tower jet. We confirm skirt set. Roger, tower jet. Mode 2, Jim, looking good. Mode 2. Now, things in the launch have been going fine so far, but they're going to have a minor hitch. Level reports that the guidance system is correcting the small errors. 13 Houston, guidance is good, and the CMC is go. Okay, thank you. 13, Roger. I say minor, but it could have been much more dangerous than the service module problem. Um, coming now on four minutes. We're now at an altitude of 63 miles. Coming soon, the one of the engines on the second stage uh, nearly rips the thing apart and has to be shut down. It uh, is produced that the stage is getting a whole lot of pogo oscillations, which they thought they had At fixed minutes, 15 seconds, the earlier on in development, but they didn't. Minutes, so little red lines are right on the little white lines down here. And so yeah, the engines themselves were experiencing really high g forces. And one of them got shut down. They didn't know why the shutdown happened Velocity at the time to during the mission. Second. That's about 36% of the amount needed for a minimum orbit. We're now 75 miles in altitude. This island below us is Pulau Durai. Uh, Ecom reports. Five minutes, you're looking perfect, over. 13, Roger. And our ECOM reports that the cabin pressure is sealed at 6.1 pounds, which is normal. And we're now 250 miles downrange, altitude 81 nautical miles. Can't even really read the N1 numbers. The throttle setting is 39%, as you can see there. We're already going pretty fast. You can see where the red line is at, uh, whoops, uh, 340 knots there. Uh, nope. And trying to use the elevator trim to get this trimmed out launch. has been to look very good on the sketchy. Stage. Jim Lovell just reported the inboard engine is shut down as scheduled. Nice photo scenery though. 13 Houston, stand by for S4B to COI. At least from this flight, uh, this height. At least from this height. Roger, you've got it now, Jim. So we'll follow along uh, the east coast of Sumatra that the down to Jakarta. Uh, down was a bit early. Uh, we're continuing to burn on the uh, four outboard engines. 13. Go and uh, Houston, what's the story on engine five? Jim, uh, Houston, we don't have a story on why the inboard out was uh, early, but the uh, other engines are go and you're go. Roger. At six minutes, 40 seconds. It's still looking good. Your gimbals are good. Trim is good. Roger. We are here. 13 Houston, level sense arm time 8 plus 38 nominal. S2 cutoff time 9. Not a whole lot of wind today. Roger, nominal on the level sense arm 9 or 48 on the uh, S2 cutoff. That's affirmative and stand by for S4B to orbit. Mark, you have S4B to orbit, Jim. Roger, we have S4B to orbit. We still have four good engines on the Saturn second stage. We show an altitude of 96 nautical miles, 545 downrange. That's a nice look. And at 7 minutes 45 seconds, booster reports we are go. All four engines remaining uh, looking good. The early shutdown of the center engine 
uh, would, would cause no problem. We would burn a little bit longer than normally scheduled. Houston looking good at eight minutes. 13, Roger. Jeez. It does a whole lot more than I wanted to do when I used the elevator trim. And at 8 minutes 17 seconds, we show a velocity of 18,000 feet per second. That's about 71% of the amount needed for a minimal orbit. For those uh, who haven't seen the rest of the videos, I have a no autopilot rule. At so. 8 minutes 35 seconds, continuing to burn on the second stage. All four remaining engines looking good at this point. They're all very short Level flights 13, anyway. Houston, mark level sensor. Mark level sensor, Roger. Follow 13, Houston, at 9 minutes, your go. The CMC is go. Okay, Joe. 13, Roger. Our predicted shutdown time on the second stage is 9 minutes 48 seconds. Flight Director Milton Wendler getting a staging status now from his flight controllers. 13 Houston, you are go for staging. 13 Roger, go for staging. for mode 4 capability. I wasn't... Mark, you have mode 4, Jim. Mode 4, Roger. I wasn't originally planning to go to staging. Jakarta. That, uh... At level report staging. That is a little and bit of a deviation Jim. in my plans. But I decided to go for Jakarta Roger because it is south of the equator. Roger. And so we'll fulfill the... crossing of the equator semi-requirement for circumnavigation. Technically for airplane circumnavigations, 13, I don't Houston, think it's actually required. They guys, are just required to get the distance Thank in. You, uh, this will handle that requirement yeah, if we want to be picky seconds, about it. We are now 102 miles in altitude, 1,080 miles downrange. So among the other firsts involved in this video, this will be our first time during this series going into the southern hemisphere. Uh, we're flying over a bay called Salat Berhala. Houston at 11 minutes, your go. Predicted cutoff on the S4B is 12 plus 34. Over. Apollo 13, uh, Houston, near go at 11 and a half, and predicted cutoff time is 12 plus 3, 4, over. Understand 12 plus 3, 4, predicted cutoff time. That's a firm. Coming up on 12 minutes, still looking good. Standing by now for a crew report of third stage shutdown. Seco. Copy Seco, Jim. We're looking at the disky. Roger. And the flight dynamics officer says at first glance we look good on the orbit. Well, they have made it to orbit. Apollo 
13 Houston. You have a go orbit, all sources, and the booster is safe. Over. Go orbit, and the booster is safe. Thank you, Joe. Don't mention it. Houston, we copy your ground 44. Okay, Joe. Now yeah, we're deviating a little bit. The booster engineer reports at this time that the S4B third stage looks good. Being configured We're looking nice and stable operations. now. We're standing by for a confirmation from the flight dynamics officer of our preliminary orbit. Apollo 13 Houston, uh, your preliminary orbit down here is 102.5 times 100.3 and everything is looking good. Roger Houston, and it looks good to be up here again. I'll bet. Apollo 13, Houston, I have your Z torquing angle. You ready? Uh, Jax, we're going to copy, Joe. Okay, it's plus decimal 26, over. It's a very interesting and distinctive okay, wing, really. That's uh, right. It seems beefier near the root. than a lot of other airliner wings. This is mission control at 17 minutes. We've had loss of signal with the spacecraft. We'll be reacquiring shortly through the Canary Island tracking station. The uh, total burn duration on the uh, third stage uh, was about uh, 45 seconds longer than planned. We would not expect at this point that this would have any uh, serious effect on the translunar injection. The fact that we did consume uh, a bit more propellant out of the third stage than was uh, originally planned. We're standing by now for acquisition of signal through the Canary Island station. We should be reacquiring radio contact with the spacecraft shortly. This is Apollo Control. We're still standing by for uh, any conversation with the spacecraft over Canary Islands. The booster systems engineer reports that at this point he has no explanation uh, for the early shutdown of the S-2 Saturn second stage center engine. Go ahead, Houston. Okay, a couple minutes to LOS, Jim. Everything is looking real good. Uh, your AOS time at uh, Carnarvon will be 52.36. And uh, we don't have too much of a handle on why the inboard uh, cut off early, except that it apparently was an engine problem and not a, uh, not a switch select function. But uh, we're certain that you'll be able to make TLI based on what we're looking at now. Uh, Roger, another leg of interest to launch. That's right. Well, we've got the stock scenery in front of us now. I've got photo All scenery around Houston, Jakarta, Canary I believe. LOS in 30 seconds. Request command reset, please. Uh, Roger, command reset, come on. Thank you. Apollo 13, Houston, request low bit rate, please. Over. I have never visited that particular photo scenery in Jakarta, so we'll have to see how that looks. This is Apollo Control. We've had loss of signal now with the spacecraft at the Canary Island tracking station. We won't reacquire again until the spacecraft uh, reaches the uh, tracking station at Carnarvon, Australia. That will be at a ground elapsed time of 52 minutes 36 seconds. Uh, recapping. At the time we lost contact with the spacecraft through Canary Islands, uh, we looked to be in very good shape uh, for the uh, translunar injection burn uh, with the uh, Saturn third stage. The uh, second stage uh, center engine shut down about two minutes early. The total uh, overburn time on the uh, third stage was about uh, 10 seconds. 
We don't expect that this would have uh, any effect on the translunar injection. At uh, 25 minutes, uh, 20 seconds, this is Mission Control, Houston. It's funny, I have it on uh, GPU encoding, but I swear the recording software OBS is using more CPU than it used to. Uh, it's using more than X-Plane itself, so it's always a puzzle. Marginally acceptable. Yeah. Okay, uh, 13, we got nothing for you at the moment. Everything's looking good. We're looking at your data now. This is mission control at 57 minutes, 15 seconds. Uh, not much conversation with the crew on this pass over the Carnarvon tracking station. Uh, Jack Swigert reported that uh, the platform had been aligned as called for in the flight plan. Uh, there's not a great deal of activity uh, scheduled in the flight plan at this time. Uh, flight Director Milton Wendler has uh, checked the status with his flight controllers and Capcom Joe Kerwin will be passing that up to the crew shortly. Law 13 Houston, LOS Carnarvon in about 30 seconds. Honeysuckle on the hour and verify your S-band is up for Honeysuckle. Over. That's verified. And Houston, we're beginning to see a beautiful sunrise here. Roger that, Jim. We've had loss of signal now with the spacecraft uh, through Carnarvon. Uh, Apollo 13 will be coming within range of the tracking antennas at the Honeysuckle Creek Australia station in less than a minute. We'll stand by for uh, reacquiring. And at one hour, 10 minutes into the flight of Apollo 13, we should be reacquiring radio contact with the spacecraft through Honeysuckle Creek momentarily. Recapping briefly the situation during the launch, we had a uh, normal first stage burn. Uh, the second stage ignition was normal, uh, up through five minutes and 30 seconds, at which time the inboard engine, engine number five, shut down early. Uh, the center engine had been scheduled to shut down at about 7 minutes and 44 seconds ground elapsed time. The cutoff on the second stage was at about 9 minutes 48 seconds, about uh, 30 seconds early. And the total uh, excess burn time on the third stage was about uh, 10 seconds. Capcom Joe, Sh Joe Kerwin has just put in a call to the crew. Uh, we've had acquisition of signal. We'll stand by for conversation with the spacecraft. 13 Houston through Honeysuckle. Roger, Houston, 13 here, breezy monitor. Okay, yes, band sounds good, Jim. Go ahead, 13. It did sound fine, now it's barely audible. I suppose there'll be too much to hope for that the 
audio okay, is better this time around for them than for the previous missions. Apollo 12 wasn't that bad. Apollo 11 had a lot of audio problems. For Apollo 12, mainly the command module pilot while in orbit around the moon. 13 Houston, did you copy your AOS time? We've had loss of signal now from the spacecraft. At uh, last look, everything appeared to be normal with the spacecraft and the launch vehicle. We currently show an orbit of 103.2 nautical miles. Actually, a uh, correction on that 102.6 by 106.3. And our current uh, altitude is 103.2. We'll be reacquiring the spacecraft over the United States at the ground elapsed time of 1 minute 28 seconds, 43, uh, 28 minutes 43 seconds, at uh, which time you heard the crew advise that uh, uh, they will be configured for the TV transmission, which is scheduled to occur at about 1 minute, uh, 1 hour 36 minutes uh, over the Mila station. The post-launch post -launch, uh, press conference is scheduled to begin shortly at uh, Cape Kennedy at uh, 1 hour Seven minutes, this is Mission Control, Houston. Okay, we're back here at uh, Kennedy Space Center now, and I guess we're ready to proceed. I think this is the first time we've heard a post any of the press conferences. They always say that they're going to have a press conference, and they never... Uh, maybe we had one during Apollo 12, I can't remember. 20 minutes. We'll do our best to try and get as many questions in in that time, but... I'll be standing by for signal also so we can go back to air ground at the proper time so that you can keep up with every phase of the mission. At this point, I'd like to introduce Mr. Walter Caprian, Director of Launch Operations for the Kennedy Space Center and Launch Director for Apollo Mission. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to see you uh, on a clear day for a change. Uh, I guess uh, there really isn't too much to uh, report to you as far as the countdown itself is concerned. It was perfectly nominal. We uh, had no problems whatsoever with the spacecraft, uh, with one exception, and that was in that uh, we do have a lock to save our pyro butts, and it takes a key to remove that lock, and we broke the darn key off in the lock, and it took us a little while to get it out. We did have <laughs> a spare key, and we took that off, and that's the sum and substance of our problems with the spacecraft. Uh, at approximately one hour and uh, 50 Boat minutes key. Before, uh, it happens to NASA too. Uh, we did uh, run into a little difficulty with a LOX vent valve in the S1C stage, which uh, uh, we were attempting to uh, cycle open and close as required for the venting process, and uh, it stuck on us in the, uh, in the full open position, and uh, we ran through a repeated number of cycles attempting to, uh, to free it, and... Uh, for some time we're unsuccessful in doing so. It uh, causes concern in that uh, if we had not been able to close the vent valve, we would not have been able to pressurize the LOX tank at T minus 72 seconds. However, we did run some uh, uh, nitrogen gas uh, through the system and we were able to sufficiently uh, uh, raise the temperature such that we were able to close the valve and we proceeded the rest of the way with that vent valve in a closed position at all times and uh, we do have a second vent well, valve well this area could definitely we, use uh, some photo scenery to uh, give us the uh, correct uh, condition pretty sure that little strip of, across that river there ought to be a bridge can't imagine what else it could be that, uh, those mm. Oop, those weird sound that was them the substance of the problems that uh, we encountered during the uh, entire countdown as uh, most of you know by this time, uh, the uh, first stage burn was uh, perfectly nominal. You may have noticed that it seemed uh, almost like an eternity before the uh, vehicle cleared the tower. Well, that, of course, was because uh, this is the heaviest ve vehicle that we've flown. It was approximately 26,000 pounds heavier at liftoff than Apollo 12, and the uh, S1C engines, though they were perfectly within specification, uh, were rated at about 100,000 pounds total thrust less than those that we had uh, on the Apollo 12 vehicle. 
uh, this this made the uh, uh, the time uh, about one half to three quarters of a second longer. In That's quite a long time hour. just to clear the tower. And the, uh, I don't know, a hundred thousand pounds less thrust seems like a lot. Up until the time that, uh, Rather the at the bottom end of the specs. Cut off. That engine is uh, normally cut off by a switch electric command approximately 90 seconds before the uh, outboard engines are cut off. For some reason that we have not been able to determine at this time, the engine did cut itself off approximately two minutes earlier than planned. Now, as a result of that having happened, the outboard engines, of course, burned approximately a half a second longer. They burned to uh, fuel, de fuel depletion and made up uh, some of the uh, energy that was lost by virtue of the inboard engine having cut off early. And when we burned the S4B, it uh, burned approximately uh, half a minute longer than originally planned in order to make up the deficiency. And at the end of the uh, first burn of the S4B, the deficiency was made up. Now, we had uh, approximately a 2,200 pound payload margin uh, uh, for this mission. We used up a little bit of that margin by the fact that the engine did cut off early, but we did not use up enough to, uh, to uh, lose any confidence in our ability to perform the TLI maneuver. We still do have a three sigma capability. So uh, uh, we have no reason to suspect that uh, we will not have a good uh, TLI burn and uh, fly a perfectly no nominal mission from this point on. I guess that's all I have in the way of uh, of general comments, uh, feel free to ask any questions if you choose to. The city there is hey, Palembang, right and we are halfway through the flight now. Why, why did we uh, nominally have the main stage engines lower rated and thrust, if I understood you correctly? They were, they were, well, you know... Good uh, question. The, uh, the vendor guarantees engine performance to within cert to a certain specification. These engines did meet that specification, it just so happens that they weren't quite as hot as the ones we flew on Apollo 12. It's quite a Nothing variation. Them. I, don't, I don't mean to imply that. I'm just explaining to you why it took a little longer to clear the tower than uh, it had taken on previous missions. Up there. The F1s were like custom, like well, handcrafted I things. I don't time for the S4B burn affect the timeline at all. I, uh, I, I don't think it affected significantly. I think we're going to be within seconds. Certainly not more than a minute or two. Question, Anderson. Uh, do you have that total liftoff weight since it was the heaviest, other than 26,000 more than the other? No, I don't. It was, uh, if, if you recall what Apollo 12 was, that 25,600 pounds to it. <laughs> that was about 6.4, but we'll check that figure for you. Al, up, all right, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, Reg. Uh, you told us there was a 22,000 pound payload margin. A 2,200 pound. 200, thanks. How much of that margin has been consumed, please? As uh, best we can determine, we, we, we used up a significant per, uh, proportion of that margin. Now, uh, beyond that margin, we still have what we call a three sigma capability. So we have the full three sigma capability I wonder if uh, people would dare to talk about Three Sigma capability to reporters these days, expecting them to know what that means. That's three standard deviations, so 99% chance of success, one in a hundred percent chance, uh, one in a hundred chance of failure. You've just got enough for TLI now. Yes. For a three sigma condition, in other words, for a worst case condition, if you put all of your three sigma errors together, which is the basis on which we plan our missions, we have enough reserves to handle that. Thank you. We, use some, we still have margin. For we still way. do have, we have all the margin we wanted to have. We have not used we up all our margin or even come close to using we it. We have our full three sigma margin. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, on that, I have on that no idea how they calculated three sigma margin for delta v, but okay. Is that fuel initial located where? Uh, the, as far as the margin itself was concerned, I can only assume that's like residuals we blew, we blew and whatever with, else. Uh, 
some extra propellant we support, never have to uh, deal with in Kerbal Space vehicle. Program. Part of it for the reason of flying this mission and part of it to just get a little bit of uh, added knowledge uh, in uh, uh, as a preliminary to flying the, uh, the J missions, which are going to be missions where we fly with heavier payloads than we've been flying, flying to this time. So we loaded the tanks up uh, more than was required to fly the mission. Quite okay. Do you Does have enough fuel left for the, uh, to guide the S for the, for the lunar impact? I asked that question uh, when I left the uh, firing room. The best answer I could get at that time was that uh, uh, we should not affect our capability of uh, flying the nominal uh, uh, lunar impact with the S-4B. In other words, we expect to impact the S-4B where we had planned to. Ed, over here. It's eerie listening to this, knowing exactly what's going to happen, of course. Don't see any more hands. Okay, we'll take two over here and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, Mattingly was in the control room. Was there no concern about his being infectious with German measles? This, he was in the control room in Houston. Mattingly left, uh, left uh, the Cape last night. Manningly was on the prime crew. He uh, contracted the German measles. That's uh, I think Jack Swagger was the one to replace him on that. So Manningly went down to the backup crew and then flew on Apollo 16. Could you give us the figures again for the uh, additional burn of the S2 and the S4B? Uh, yes, the uh, the S2. Uh, inboard engine, the center engine, uh, cut off two minutes and seven seconds earlier than it was supposed to. As a result of that, the outboard engines burned 33.96, roughly 34 seconds longer than they would have had the inboard engine uh, burned for its proper time. As far as the S-4B is concerned, the, uh, the delta in time was about the same, 33.97, roughly 34 seconds longer. Okay, we'll take one here. One, one last thing about this extra fuel, Walt. Did you have extra fuel in the S-4B by any chance uh, as a result of running this weight up, and did that give you a little more leeway? Yes, we had some extra fuel in all three stages. We had about the same amount of locks that we flew on uh, Pete Conrad's mission. We had uh, approximately 9,500 pounds more RP-1 than we had on Apollo 12. And we had more locks and hydrogen in both the other stages. I knew those figures, but I've forgotten them. I can't give them to you. Did that make any difference in the three segments? Well, it helped us out. Okay. All right, we'll take one final one up here. Can we have exact liftoff time, please? Well, let me uh, check here. Not too sure about the shadows on that, uh, the wing root area. They're a bit choppy. Okay, thank you very much. That completes the conference. We should be coming back up on uh, an acquisition in about 10 minutes. There's one thing I said that I'm not sure I knew what I was talking about and what it does to the timeline. I... <laughs> This is Apollo Control at 1 hour 28 minutes. We'll be re-establishing radio communications with Apollo 13 in about 40 seconds. As the uh, station comes within range of the Wymus, Mexico tracking station. During the uh, launch phase, the medic reports the following heart rates. These are maximum heart rates for the three crewmen. Uh, Commander Jim Lovell had a maximum heart rate during the launch of 116. Uh, the command module pilot, Jack Swigert, uh, had a maximum heart rate of 102. And uh, the lunar module pilot, Fred Hayes, also had a maximum heart rate of 102. Capcom Joe Kerwin's just put in a call to the crew through. Wymus will stand by.
Apollo 13, Houston, through Mimas, over. Ah, uh, static. Jack Swigert reporting uh, apparently his first view out the windows. Uh, Apollo 13, Houston, I have the TLI plus 90 and liftoff plus 8 pads whenever you're ready. TLI plus 90 pad, SPS, GNN, 63825, minus 154, plus 132, 004, 064553, minus 049 plus Still the stock scenery below, you could tell. And still got a ways to go. More than enough. Well, it's not really showing down here. We're probably, we're more than two thirds of the way. We're at the southern end of Sumatra. Oops. Six six two six five two six one five five four one five seven. Four sight star is Zeta Sagittarii. Up zero eight zero. Right two one. Minus two two eight one. Minus. Zero two five zero zero one one four zero seven three four zero eight seven zero one three three two one four set stars Arcturus Denebola roll zero four four pitch zero one two yaw Zero two five. No knowledge, over. All right, Joe, uh, we had a dropout of signal there uh, about midway or about just at the start of your pad, and uh, Fred didn't get it. We'd like you to start over again. Could you please? Sure thing. You want the whole thing? Yes, I think you better. Okay, TLI plus 90. SPS, GNN. Six, three, eight, two, five. Minus one five four plus one three two zero zero four zero six four five five three minus zero four nine or one seven plus zero 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 one 
plus six six three four zero one eight zero two two eight zero zero one and slash a plus zero zero one seven niner six six five two two seven three seven six six two six five two six one five five four one five seven Zeta Sagittarii up zero eight zero right two one minus two two eight one minus zero two five zero zero one one four zero seven three four zero eight seven zero one three three two one four set stars Arcturus De Nebula roll zero four four pitch zero one two yaw zero two five no wallage over Okay, uh, Joe, that's uh, 63825 minus uh, 154 plus 132 004 06 Fred Houston, one. Minus 049017 plus 00001. Uh, I don't think you got the standby there. Fred Houston, over. Uh, go ahead. Uh, that's correct. Uh, uh, we'd like you to go to the S-Band Ox TV. Switch to TV, please. Okay, it's set to TV. Okay, we're, go we're not getting a signal. Okay, okay I'm, I'm going to transmit, Joe. Okay, you can continue reading back. Okay, uh, roll uh, 180, pitch 228, yaw 001, in flash A, plus 0017, manner, 665227337. Six six two six five and a uh, missed sextant uh, uh, ship Trunyan Trunyan uh, one five seven Zeta Sagitt and a uh, missed sextant uh, uh, ship Trunyan Trunyan uh, one five seven Zeta Sagittarius up zero eight zero roll two one. Minus two two eight one minus zero zero correction minus zero two five zero zero one one four zero seven three four zero eight seven zero one three three two one four set stars Arcturus and the Nebula uh, roll uh, line uh, zero four four pitch zero one two yaw zero two five no knowledge. Roger, Fred, read back correct. The uh, second star is 26, and the shaft is 1554. Over. Okay, second star 26 and uh, 1554. Roger, and we have a picture now. Uh, uh, however, it's uh, moving around quite a bit. If you could hold the camera a little steadier. And I have your. Uh, Joe, uh, the, there's nothing but clouds outside, and. Uh, and when we get some uh, land down there coming up, I'll switch back to the window. I thought I'd just show you Jim here to make sure he's still here. Okay, real fine. We had a good picture of Jim there for a minute. I have the liftoff plus eight pad, Fred, if you're ready. Go ahead, Jim. Okay, GETI 00800. Delta VT 7835. Longitude minus 165, GET 400K, 02236, over. Okay, uh, 00800, 7835, minus 165, 02236. Okay, that, and I have TLI pad for you. Yep, okay, we are definitely getting TLI. some photo scenery now. There's the border there. Unfortunately, lots of clouds baked into the photo scenery. One zero eight zero 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 five four seven one zero four one six niner 
Well, I mean, I guess ground could control could help. specific they're getting on their geography here. I think we can see the southern tip of Sumatra now. Some shades of Java on the horizon. Now we can see Jakarta on the map, you are go for TLI. and we want this uh, uh, WICB, I think. Pad, which is, uh, three seconds more than three I'm not sure, case. but that looks so like a good, good well, there's the, uh, WIII, so well, that, that that's the thing. Yes, that's the, the, the one. We have for you is in the, uh, Again, I revised my flight plan, so where you originally we were going to go straight to Vietnam. The next plane I'm gonna fly is a MiG-15, and I don't know whether it can make the whole flight from Jakarta to Ho Chi Minh City. We're gonna find out. Uh, the engine out did cause you to use uh, more S4B fuel, uh, about a 10 second longer. That's a long flight for a MiG-15. Oh, well, we can definitely see Java Island now. The uh, westmost part of it. And we're gonna hang a bit of a left here. And start descending.
Okay, Houston, my circuit breaker is armed or closed. Sequential logic 2 on and up, and for anybody. Okay, 13, your go for fire alarm. We've had loss of signal now with the uh, spacecraft through the uh, Vanguard uh, tracking ship. We'll be reacquiring at uh, Canary Islands in uh, just a few minutes. Uh, Roger, uh, 13, go ahead. Roger, uh, we have our sequential arm circuit breakers in and our sequential logic two on and up, and we're just standing by for your confirmation for go. Oh, sorry, 13, you didn't copy. You are go for pyro arm, over. Okay, fine, thank you. Apollo 13, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Uh, about two and a half minutes to LOS, Jim, and your uh, AOS at Carnarvon will be 2 plus 2, 5 plus 5, 0, over. Roger, AOS at Carnarvon, 2 plus 2, 5 plus 5, 0. All right, it's front. Apollo 13, Houston, LOS in about one minute. At LOS, we'd like uh, command reset and then huh. normal. That's sort of spoilers aren't really spoiling enough. But I think they just allowed us to descend faster temporarily there. We've lost contact now with the spacecraft through the Canary Islands tracking station. We'll be reacquiring in a little less than 30 minutes at a ground elapsed time of two hours, 26 minutes. Looking uh, good so far. Within range of the tracking antennas at Carnarvon, Australia. Uh, during the uh, pass over the United States and out over the uh, Atlantic, uh, Capcom Joe Kerwin gave the crew a preliminary go-ahead for translunar injection. Uh, we have adequate propellant margins on the uh, Saturn third stage, uh, despite the uh, some 10 seconds of additional burn in getting into orbit due to the uh, early shutdown of the second stage center engine. It is not expected that the somewhat uh, later injection time will have any significant effect on the flight plan. The uh, preliminary time for the beginning of the translunar injection burn is uh, 2 hours 35 minutes 27 seconds. The flight dynamics officer is in the process now of updating that time, but we don't expect uh, uh, a significant change. At 1 hour 57 minutes 55 seconds, this is Mission Control Houston. This is Apollo Control at 2 hours 25 minutes. Apollo 13 is now about uh, 10 minutes away from the uh, scheduled ignition of the S-4B engine to start the spacecraft uh, on its way to the moon. The flight dynamics officer advises that the uh, planned time for the beginning of that burn will be 2 hours, 35 minutes, 44 seconds, ground elapsed time. Our network controller reports that we've just had acquisition of signal uh, with the spacecraft uh, from Carnarvon. Uh, during this pass, flight controllers will be looking at the spacecraft. To our left the is the city of Sarang. Uh, one last time before uh, translunar injection. Joe, read you loud and clear. We're sitting here at monitoring time base six. You can see Captain Dan, we're 20 seconds away. Okay, we're just starting to get data and everything still looks good to us. Hey Joe, at uh, two hours and 12 minutes, the O2 flow highlight came on. It's been pegged high ever since, so it's been on about 14 minutes now. Uh, Roger 13, uh, we're looking at it. Time base six. Copy time basics. Okay, Apollo 13 Houston, uh, you have a go for all systems. And the uh, O2 flow high uh, jack is uh, nominal with the, uh, the waste tank vent open at this time. And uh, it's no sweat. Okay, just wanted you all to check it for me. 
Okay, we did. Thank you. The crew is rather quiet at this time, preparing uh, for that translunar injection burn. Uh, the burn again scheduled to begin at 2 hours 35 minutes 44 seconds. The predicted duration of the burn is 5 minutes 47 seconds, and we expect that the uh, spacecraft uh, and S-4B will accelerate some 10,417 feet per second as a result of that maneuver. Uh, we will not uh, get data from the burn. Uh, we'll be out of acquisition uh, with the spacecraft at the time the uh, maneuver occurs. Uh, three Araya aircraft, Apollo range instrumented aircraft, are stationed in the ground track off the coast of Australia uh, underneath uh, the point on Earth where the translunar injection burn will be occurring. And they'll be recording data from it, which we could play back uh, somewhat later if necessary. The booster engineers just reported that the S-4B chill down in preparation for the uh, burn has begun. Apollo 13 Houston, uh, we'll be losing data from Carnarvon in about one minute. We'll probably have voice through Orion. Everything is hunky-dory and we'll be listening for you to tell us how the burn goes. Okay, this is 13, we're standing by two. Okay, well, that sound was unnecessary. Well, we've had loss of signal now through uh, Carnarvon. And Capcom Joe Crowan has just put in a call through one of the Araya aircraft. Okay, Jim, it's not the best, but we're reading you. Roger. Uh, we expect communications I think will continue the to be somewhat noisy. Uh, airport the that, is uh, on from the spacecraft sort of through the Orion on the aircraft. west side of the city, so we'll actually be approaching it before we, we, will not see we the, go over uh, the city. Uh, uh, so uh, we why don't we quickly fly over the city first before trying to land? Uh, we're now just a little more than one minute away from the scheduled beginning. Come on, PAO, there's no excuse for your audio to be bad. I shouldn't hear them. Copy that, Jim. Good deal. Copy that, Jim. Good deal. Highway below us there is the AH-2, apparently. Lovell's report would indicate we had a very close to on-time uh, ignition. The total burn duration should be about 5 minutes, 47 seconds. Okay, so far. Houston, roger. Lots of funny Jim sounds. Lovell just reported that everything you know, looks good with that burn. Uh, we're still about seven minutes away from reacquiring the spacecraft through the uh, station at Hawaii, at which time we'll get our first good look at the trajectory as a result of this burn. minutes into the uh, translunar injection burn, some uh, two minutes, 17 seconds remaining in the uh, maneuver, which will start Apollo 13 en route to the moon. So did you know the vibration of during this burn? Houston, roger. Now about 20 seconds away from the scheduled shutdown time. Uh, Jim Lovell ref reported a few moments ago that uh, they're experience a bit, experiencing a bit of vibration uh, on the S-4B. Uh, previous crews have also reported uh, similar experience toward the end of the burn. Well, this is all the Jakarta metropolitan area. 
You can see the airport to the left there. Engine off. Engine off. Houston copy. Engine off. Ah. The levels report Clouds of, clearing uh, up a bit. Off came about five or six seconds uh, after the uh, pre-planned time. Why in three minutes? Roger, I will Y in three minutes. Our communications continuing to come to us uh, relayed through the Araya aircraft. Uh, Capcom Joe Kerwin advised uh, Lovell and the Apollo 13 crew that will be reacquiring uh, a little less than three minutes from now through Hawaii, at which time we should get uh, good solid S-band communications and also our first look at uh, the trajectory of Apollo 13 following the burn. Our communications is getting quite noisy at this point <laughs> through the Araya relay. And I cut out a lot of that uh, noise right there, actually. And, uh, engine it was a good half minute before he said that. At least fairly close to nominal. Uh, looking good. Looking uh, he good. Reported engine shut down about six seconds uh, following the time that the engine uh, was scheduled to uh, shut down. And we'll be reacquiring at Hawaii in about uh, 45 seconds. We've had acquisition of signal at Hawaii. We'll stand by for a call to the crew. Apollo 13, Houston through Hawaii. Uh, 13, Houston, uh, you're weak but clear. It'll probably get better in a second. We're standing by for the burn report. Roger. And 13 Houston, the booster reports uh, that everything looks good with the S-4. Sounds good, Houston. Uh, the ride was uh, very uh, nominal. We had a little vibration, though, during most of the run. Okay, we copied your call on that, Jim. Okay, uh, Joe, uh, the disc read uh, 35560 plus 04445-01769er. And LBC was minus uh, 3.0. Oh, Roger. <laughs> you can't ask for much better than that. Uh, how about the burn time? Did you notice? Okay, on uh, my trusty watch, I had about uh, three and three quarter seconds uh, long. Okay, copy that. So what we see in front of us is the heart of Jakarta. Apollo 13, Houston. Roger, Houston, 13 here. Okay, uh, we have the S-4B maneuver to SEP attitude, uh, commencing at 2, plus 5, 6, plus 3, 7. Duration of the maneuver, 4 minutes. And Sept it's looking time, mighty fine. 3, plus 0, 6, plus 3, 7. Got a bit of a wiggle. Okay, if I heard those right, uh, Joe, that the uh, S4B maneuver was 2 plus 5, 6 plus 5, 7, and step time is 3 plus 0, 6 plus 2, 7. Uh, correction on the seconds, uh, 2 plus 5, 6 plus 3, 7, and 3 plus 0, 6 plus 3, 7. Okay, 2 plus 5, 6 plus uh, 3, 7 uh, was the uh, maneuver time, and uh, the uh, step time, 3 plus uh, 0, 6... Oh, the allergen isn't uh, producing seven. buildings in uh, these uh, three, seven, patches two, that are uh, sort of light exactly blue. Later, okay, 3, 7. Not distinct enough to read the building locations, I guess. The contrast. This is Mission Control. We're now at 2 hours 54 minutes with the crew uh, preparing for the CSM uh, 
uh, separation from the S-4B, the subsequent docking uh, with the lunar module and the ejection of the uh, LAM and command module from the Saturn third stage. Uh, the times of all of those events are al almost precisely as uh, indicated in the flight plan. The separation maneuver is scheduled to occur at uh, ground elapsed time of 3 hours 6 minutes 37 seconds. And the uh, uh, docking would come then with the LEM at uh, 3 hours 16 minutes ground elapsed time. Our displays in mission control are showing the effects of the okay. translunar injection well. burn. Show the Let's get the landing the gear out while I'm still out here. Up, slow down. Traveling at a velocity of 31,406 feet per second. Okay. And into the cockpit, such as it is. Apollo 13, Houston. Go ahead. We see the booster doing all the right things. And Fido says your trajectory looks good and uh, looks like we'll stick with a pretty close to nominal mid-course, too. We'll have some numbers for you later. Okay, and we concur. The uh, S-4B is what we're doing this time. Roger. Houston, we'd like Omni Alpha over. Actually, that gray bit is not the runway, is it? It's that one on the side. 13 Houston, now request Omni Charlie. Okay, I think I know which one's the runway and now. The booster engineer reports the uh, S-4B is nearly in the proper attitude. Uh, we're about uh, five and a half minutes uh, from the scheduled time of separation, and we are expecting that the crew will have the television uh, transmitter and camera on, uh, beginning at a ground elapsed time of about uh, three hours, 15 minutes uh, for television coverage of the uh, docking. Houston, you are go for T&D. Okay, Joe, thank you. And uh, 13 Houston, uh, check your noun 17 for extraction pitch attitude. It should be 3190 degrees over. Okay, well, I got it. Whoa, that's a lot of lift from the flaps. I don't need that much. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh
As far as they know, everything is looking good at this point, but of course we know slightly different. Uh, but next time I'm gonna try and fly an F, uh, sorry, a MiG-15, F-15 would be much easier, a MiG-15 from uh, Jakarta to uh, Vietnam, and we'll see how that works out. So uh, with this flight, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this flight. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.